Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about chlamydia. This video is very important because chlamydia is the most commonly reported communicable disease in Australia. Those under 30 years are at greatest risk. It is frequently asymptomatic. It is always simple to test and treat. However, immunity to new infection is not provided by previous infection. Chlamydia is caused by a bacteria called Chlamydia trachomatis. Again, Chlamydia trachomatis. So as for the clinical presentations, it differs from males to females. So in males, 50% are asymptomatic, while in females, 75% are asymptomatic. Dysuria could be present in both. Urethral discharge in males, vaginal discharge in females, testicular pain in males, pelvic pain in females, anorectal symptoms could be present in both, and specifically for females, intermenstrual bleeding and postcoital bleeding. As for the complications, they also differ from males to females. So in males, they could have epididymal orchitis or reactive arthritis including arthralgia, hypertrophic rash on soles, circinate balneitis, psoriatic rash. In females, they could have pelvic inflammatory disease, PID, infertility, ectopic pregnancy, and reactive arthritis, including arthralgia, hypertrophic rash on soles, and psoriatic rash. So we diagnose chlamydia using the nucleic acid amplification test, NAAT. And that could be done through first pass urine. But if uh, the patient of the group, men who have sex with men, then we also need to collect anal and pharyngeal swabs, even if asymptomatic at these sites. Now, the anorectal swabs, they could be done through self-collection if the patient is asymptomatic or through proctoscope if the patient is symptomatic or self-collection if the patient refuses doing it through the proctoscope. As for the diagnosis in females, it is also the same test, nucleic acid amplification test. The swabs are different here. We can take an endocervical swab. It is the best test if the patient is examined. Endocervical swab, okay? The second way is a self-collected vaginal swab. And that can be done if the patient is not examined. The third way is a first pass urine. It is only done if endocervical swab or self-collected vaginal swab cannot be taken, like for example after hysterectomy. And it is not as sensitive as self-collected vaginal swabs. The last way is the anorectal swab. If the patient has had anal sex or has anorectal symptoms, that's when we order anorectal swabs. And if the patient declines anal examination, instruct self-collection or refer patient for testing to sexual health center. So the clinical indicators for testing are less than 30 years and sexually active, partner change in the last 12 months, an STI in the past 12 months, a sexual partner with an STI, an increased risk of complications of an STI, such as in cases of termination of pregnancy or intrauterine device insertion, signs or symptoms suggestive of chlamydia, and the last one, patient requests a sexual health check. So now we'll discuss the management of chlamydia. So regarding the management in uncomplicated genital or pharyngeal infections, 
the recommended is using doxycycline, 100 milligrams orally twice a day for seven days, or azithromycin, one gram orally stat. While in cases of anorectal infection, we can divide them into asymptomatic and symptomatic. If the patient is asymptomatic, what we can use is a doxycycline 100 mg orally twice a day for 7 days. But if the patient is symptomatic, then we use doxycycline 100 mg orally twice a day for 21 days. There's also an alternative uh, treatment for anorectal infection, which is azithromycin, one gram orally stat, and repeat in one week. So now we'll move on to some of the treatment advice that we can benefit from. So the first one is we should always treat immediately if there is a high index of suspicion. If urethritis symptoms, use doxycycline while waiting result, test results. Or if contact of index case, use either azithromycin or doxycycline depending on assessment of adherence or patient preference. The second advice is Start treatment for patient and sexual partner or partners without waiting for lab results. So we don't need to wait for lab results to start the treatment. Okay? The third thing is use azithromycin as the principal treatment option when nursing administered standing orders available. The next one is, if a patient has an intrauterine device, IUD, leave IUD in place and treat as recommended. Seek specialist advice as needed. Other important immediate management is we should advise no sexual contact for seven days after treatment is administered. We should also advise no sex with partners from the last six months until the partners have been tested and treated if necessary. Contact tracing is very important in all sexually transmitted infections. So we trace back to six months in cases of chlamydia. We should also provide the patient with fact sheet just for reading material and notify the state or territory health department. So now we'll discuss with you two special conditions in the management of chlamydia. The first one is pregnant women. We treat them with azithromycin 1 gram orally stat. The second special condition is rectal co-infection. For rectal co-infection with gonorrhea, treatment should be given for both infections. So, for example, we can give ciftriaxone 500 milligrams IM stat in 2 mLs 1% lignocaine plus the treatment of chlamydia, which is doxycycline 100 milligrams orally twice a day for 7 days if asymptomatic and 21 days if symptomatic.
So the last thing we're discussing is follow-up. So what we should do is review our patient in one week. This provides an opportunity to confirm patient adherence with treatment and assess for symptom resolution, confirm contact tracing procedures that have been undertaken or offer more contact tracing support, provide further sexual health education and prevention counselling. There is also another thing called test of cure, TOC. TOC is done by nucleic acid amplification test, NAAT. In these situations, should be performed at least four weeks after treatment is completed. An earlier TOC could yield a false positive result due to the presence of chlamydia DNA remnants. So it is done in pregnant women, and in rectal chlamydia. Another thing we should also consider is retesting. Reinfection is common and retesting at three months is recommended to detect reinfection. We should also consider testing for other STIs if not undertaken at first presentation or retesting post the window period. So that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful for you. Please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much.